So what is Paul panicked over? What was he afraid of? Because he wrote the book on eternal security. We've talked about that. It, the issue is entering versus inheriting. And I told you, I, I, I've already put this in here, the whole idea that, that uh, entering is one thing, inheritance is another. Inheritance are privileges that will be widely variable, like rewards. There are two kinds of inheritance. There is a kind of inheritance you cannot lose. Claronomia. It's a, it's a, you will never lose your son. The prodigal son never lost his sonship. He went and misbehaved, blew his inheritance, no question, but he didn't lose his sonship. There's part of that you cannot lose, so don't let me confuse you. But it also includes a conditional earned reward. Typically, an inheritance is conditioned upon some conditions. Being obedient. And you can ask Esau about that. You can ask Reuben about that. You got example after example after example, not the least of which is Moses. After 120 years of faithful service, he didn't get to enter the promised land. No, he was allowed to look at it from the hill. He didn't make it. Didn't make it. He's got another chance, I think, in, Roman, in uh, Revelation 11. But See, sanctification should lead to partaking in Christ. And uh, partaking should lead to um, overcoming. That's why I like to be called this the overcoming view, if you will, which of course leads to inheriting. And that's what you and I are going to find out about at the Bema Seat. And uh, for we are made partakers of Christ. If we, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Partakers of Christ, the Greek term is metakoi, partaker. That's one who shares in a companion, comrade, partner, in any work, office, or dignity. Metakoi. And uh, you're a metakoi, there's a big word there, if, if, how do you know you're a metakoi? If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. There is a prize, a reward for hanging in there. You're hanging in there doesn't create your justification. Jesus took care of that. But you're hanging in there is where you get rewarded by our King. And uh, what is it that we must hold steadfast to the end? How do we become a metakoi? Glad you asked. There are seven letters that Jesus explains that to you. And each letter concludes with a promise to the overcomer. Some of you are overcomers, and there may be some of you that, at least for a while, are overtaken. And uh, we'll get an inheritance. Inheritance came typically to the firstborn son by virtue of his birth. That was the basic pattern. Whether he actually secured it depended upon his obedience and his father's choice. That's the Old Testament pattern again and again and again and again. So your inheritance is subject to conditions and it's subject to obedience. The Abrahamic inheritance was based on the divine oath, and that was con also conditioned in, in, turn, in part by obedience. Inheritances were forfeited in the Old Testament, in the land of Canaan. It was, it was their inheritance, and that's so, so uh, all through the Torah. And it was merited by obedience. The Exodus generation was promised an inheritance, but they failed to obtain it at Kadesh Barnea. And that event at Kadesh Barnea is the main theme of the epistle of the Hebrews. It's amazing how many commentators spend all their time wondering who really wrote the book rather than what it really says. See, Israel was, in a sense, God's firstborn son. That's the way they're identified when they first are come. They go down as a family, but they come out as a nation in Exodus 4. Israel's called God's firstborn. And yet only two of two million took possession of their inheritance. That's not quite true because there's also a large number that were under 20 that weren't counted, but they, they did get in, but the others were taken in that generation. See, even Moses was excluded because of his disobedience at, at Rephidim. So Esau, ask Esau about inheritance. He sold his inheritance for a bowl of pottage. Reuben, uh, Jacob's firstborn, blew it because of his uh, messing around with the concubines and what have you. And David warned Solomon about the same kind of thing. And of course, there's a generation of Israelites that were forfeited because they were enslaved to Babylon for more than a generation, 70 years. And so inheritance, inheritances include things that are merited. Abraham, Abraham, 
Caleb and Joshua, of course. Uh, only two out of two million. That's interesting. Those are the two. Often the second comes before the first. It wasn't Cain. It was but Abel and Seth. Not Japheth, but Shem. Not Ishmael, but I. Each one of these was the second was put ahead of the first. Esau, not Esau, but Jacob. Not Manasseh, but Ephraim. Not Aaron, but Moses. Aaron was the older brother. Not Eliab, but David. And not the old covenant, but the new. Not the first Adam, but the last Adam. That's the title of Christ. Paul calls him the last Adam. In the sense that he's the, he's the... Now, what can you lose your inheritance by? In the Old Testament, Esau, Moses are examples. And... Uh, at Kadesh Barnea, God forgave them for their lack of faith. That people miss that. He forgave them for that, but he still didn't let them inherit because he swore an oath. Did you ever wonder why God swears an oath? Because when God swears an oath, he's pointing out something that he's not going to change his mind about. He can change his mind about other things, at least anthropomorphically. But when he swears an oath, that's something that's not going to change. And the writer to Hebrews makes a point of that. Many people misunderstand the book of Hebrews because they don't understand chapter 10 where Esau goes to Jacob to get a blessing and Jacob can't give it to him. He's given it to the other son, right? And so Esau goes to Jacob and he's upset because he can't get Jacob to repent. The writer's making the point that the senior is the one that's not repenting, not the junior. And so that people misunderstand what follows is because it's the senior. It's God that doesn't repent because he's sworn oath. We think of repentance of the sinner changing his mind. No, it's also anyone repent, changing his mind. And God doesn't change his mind because he's sworn oath. That's his point that the writer's making. And so um, at Rephidim the second time, after 120 years out, Moses blows it. And of course, Reuben loses his inheritance. In the New Testament, the prodigal son is a good example. He never lost his sonship, but he certainly blew his inheritance. He's still welcome. Somebody come in and so forth. Oh, that was all cool, but he didn't get his inheritance back. He'd already blown that. Ananias and Sapphira weren't unsaved. At least there's no evidence of that. They certainly blew it, and they were taken out of the ballgame. And of course, Paul's paranoia is the capstone of all of those. That's what we've just gone through. Okay. So in Hebrews, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So you can blow it. Can't lose yourself. You can't lose your justification. Don't confuse by that. But you certainly can lose your rewards. Let us labor that we can enter that rest. Unlike the assurance that all Christians have that they possess eternal life and will be raised up to enjoy the presence of God. That's given. That's the, you can't lose that. But you're certainly going to lose some other things. They're partaking as a metacoy of the Messiah in his dominion over creation is attained by doing his will to the end. That's our calling. Now, these are everybody at the Bema seat are believers. The justification is not an issue. Judgment will emanate from the Bema seat with a, ju a just recompense of reward for works, that is, fruit bearing, both positive and negative as appropriate. And there's lots of verses on that. They'll be in your notes. The spectrum, I think, was if we think of the Bema seat, it's a spectrum in the dimension of faithfulness. To the left is lack of faithfulness. To the right is more faithfulness in the little diagram. We know there are at least five crowns mentioned. That might be one crown with five labels on it. Or there could be 17 different crowns that five happen to be mentioned. We don't know. But there are five that are specifically identified in the scripture. And uh, there are these crowns that are promised. There's a crown of life for those who have suffered for his sake. There's a crown of righteousness for those who loved his appearing. I love this one. Do you realize that's for the pre-tribbers? That love is appearing. Not his coming of vengeance. It's talking about the blessed hope. The rapture. The crown of glory for those who fed the flock. Have you fed the flock? There's a crown for you for that. A crown incorruptible for those who press on steadfastly. These obviously overlap. These might be five labels for just a crown. Or there might be a whole bunch of crowns and they pick five to talk about. The crown of rejoicing for those who win souls. That's pretty cool. 
the people that are on the left side of the diagram, we, we, we call them overtaken. They mean well, but they fumbled, whatever. Haven't lost their justification. They're still there. They're at the Bema seat. They're in heaven. They have eternal life. Praise God. Jesus will get all the glory. That's cool. But there's some that are overcomers. They really had a walk, as we call it, that uh, pleased the Lord. We'll call those the overcomers. In fact, we don't call them that. Jesus does. He has promises to the overcomers, seven of them in the seven letters. There's a different one in each of the letters. That's relative to the theme of that each particular letter. The ones to the left are people that we sometimes use the term carnal Christians. They're certainly saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, but their lives don't seem to reflect it. We call them carnal Christians. They're Christians, apparently. They're saved, probably. But you can't tell. If they were on trial for being a Christian, there's not enough evidence to convict them, so to speak. There's a sort of a cynical facetiousness there. 